Tonight on Dispatches, we meet some of Britain's most challenging children. Caught you being naughty. Nationally, we're seeing far more highly disruptive behaviour in younger children. 97% of primary school teachers say they have disruptive children in their class. It's a full day a week that's missing out of teaching time because those children are demanding so much teacher attention in the classroom. Dispatches examines some of the most effective solutions and asks why so little money is available to help hard-pressed teachers and desperate parents. I wish the government would actually realise that schools need this kind of support. It's not all about academics. Ramridge Primary in Luton has around 390 pupils aged between 3 and 11. Most children behave well most of the time, but they also have their lapses. You going to say sorry to me? I'm always talking good for one year, then in the next one, I'm like, Bleh people and check chairs at them. I don't want to disturb the class, I just don't want to do the work. At a time you're doing it, you don't, you don't think like, oh, I shouldn't do this. Whatever children's are things, just say anything to me, I'll just, I'll just get up now. Ten-year-old Levi is one of approximately 750,000 primary school children in Britain who regularly disrupt classes. Why don't you want to go into Maple class? Yeah, I need, I need a reason. Today, it's a Monday, and Levi is refusing to go into class. Let's go and find out what they're doing, and we'll go and have a look. Mrs. Auckland's really looking forward to having you in her class. Yes, we're going. OK, OK, if you walk off, Levi, you're going to end up going home. Kate is part of the pastoral care team in Luton. It's their job to cope with the school's more challenging children. We spend a large proportion of the of our time working with Levi and keeping him in, in class. Oh. We're doing what you did yesterday. Mrs Kemp! Come down here and let me explain. Can you get Mrs Kemp, Callum, please? Levi can swear and shout and kick out at me and refuse to do what I say because I'm not going to hold a grudge, I'm not going to put him down or, or make him feel bad about himself. Levi, Levi, Levi! No, no. This is a case of just not listening to here an instruction. Go. I'd like to say I'm the most valuable person in the school, <laughs> um, but I think I think generally having the pastoral care team, the, the whole of us, is is incredibly vital. I don't think the school could work without us. Levi has been in school today for two hours and twenty minutes, and already Kate has spent most of the morning trying to get him into class. Go away! But you need to make a, you no, need to make a choice. Come on. Without the things that we do, the teachers couldn't contain the children in the classes. They need the extra support, they need the extra help. It gives teachers the time to teach the children, which is what they're here to do. Levi, what choices are you making? No, that's, not, that's really not an option. the children here will become aggressive because they want our help. They're not generally aggressive to us physically, they're verbally aggressive to us a lot, um, but the staff here are trained in how to kind of restrain children, positively handle them. When a child is so distressed that they need restraining, they're probably heading for the school's quiet room, an empty space with bare walls and no furniture to throw or climb on. The pastoral care team refer to it as the BIP room. Levi is a regular in the BIP room. Kate did finally get him into class this morning, but just two hours later, he's once again determined not to take part in lessons. No, Levi, that's not fair. What is fair? Nothing with you, is it? We're not going to do another 20 minutes like we did this morning. We'll give him two, two minutes and then, we're, then we'll go to the BIP room. Levi, are you going to come into class? 
then we're going to have to take you to the bit room. We put it back on the child. We give them an option. With Levi, you've got two minutes to choose what you're going to do. You can either go into Willow class or we'll go into the bit room and it's up to it's your choice and then we'll follow whatever they choose. Right, Levi, we're going into we're gonna go into the bit room. No, Levi, stand up. No, sorry, if you if yeah, just take that and we will better walk in. Get off of me! If we hadn't have walked Levi in, that could have ended with him leaving the premises. Um, he, it's unlikely, but Levi could become aggressive to us. So if we're we're moving him into a safe place, into the quiet room, he's safe, we're safe. We're not disturbing anybody else's learning. It's not public, if you like, either. Um, but it is the last thing we do that has to be done sometimes. Watch his feet with him, he grips. Thanks. But yeah, it's not the most pleasant part of my job. Get off! Get off! Get off me! Levi, good choices can still be made now. It's not the end of the road, is it? I'm going to leave you again for a few minutes. Think about what you want to do. Think about good choices, Levi. Not yet, no. Most of the time the children end up in the bit room. They've got to a point where they can't cope anymore. And it normally means that this is last chance and you have to make the, the right choice or you're going home. Government statistics for 2007 state that in England alone, 18,000 primary school pupils like Levi behaved so violently that they were excluded from school. But few teachers will talk openly about the violence and disruption they face. Teachers feel they can't actually talk openly because it will be quite clearly put around that you are a troublemaker. Four or five times I've been deliberately attacked by a child. You're so used to children refusing to do something that actually it becomes almost normal. When you have Ofsted inspections in schools, certain children are asked to stay at home for particular days. It might be seen that you're not managing that child very well, even though you are in fact managing that child well because they're not chucking things around the classroom. But how are you supposed to explain that to an Ofsted inspector? To discover the true scale of the problem and the impact these children are having on teachers and other pupils throughout the UK, Dispatches and the Teachers' Union, the NASUWT, carried out the biggest survey that has ever been undertaken, asking primary school teachers about behaviour. The results confirmed what teachers are saying in private. Two-thirds of the teachers surveyed say there is more challenging behaviour now than when they started teaching, and three-quarters said they have problems with physically aggressive children. We had a child he would swear he would hit children. One day as he was going down with his year six child, he pushed her down the stairs and she broke an arm. That was when he was six. You imagine a child like that being in a class and your child being in there? One child got out a lighter and set fire to the tissue paper holder, which ignited into quite a strong fire and the school had to be evacuated and was closed. <laughs> Glasgow is one of Europe's most deprived cities. With high levels of drug and alcohol misuse, domestic violence and unemployment, it's perhaps not surprising that children are bringing issues to school that affect their behaviour. Nine-year-old Jordan lives in the north of the city with her mum and her two brothers. Both Jordan and her younger brother Jamie attend Royston Primary School. favourite teacher left the school due to ill health a few months ago and since then Jordan has become increasingly disruptive. 
Although teachers report aggressive behavior is more often a problem with boys, Jordan shows that girls too can be hard to handle. The teacher was very, very ill and had to stay off for a long period of time. And that was when it really kicked off, as we put it, that's a technical term. There were a few days when she was so out of control, we had to ask her mum to come and get her and take her home. She was under tables, over tables, shouting at people, shouting at teachers, refusing to do what she was told, um, not getting on with classmates, being aggressive, very unfriendly. The way I see it is there's a really nice girl in there. I've seen her, I've met her. <laughs> but she doesn't let many people meet that. Okay. Eyes this way. Jordan, Liam. Two minutes, I'm rubbing this wee bit out. Get him! Come on! That was a foul shot! He landed the lemon gum. <laughs> the dispatch's survey indicates that Jordan in Glasgow and Levi in Luton are both representative of around three quarters of a million disruptive children in Britain's primaries. What's exceptional about Jordan and Levi is the fact that they are being helped by what are known as early intervention programmes. These look way beyond just the child's behaviour and seek to address the root causes of their problems. The approaches in Glasgow and Luton are different, but over the months in which we follow Jordan, Levi and others, we will learn how both strategies affect these challenging children. It's about saying, why is that child misbehaving? What can we do to help that child cope in school and in the outside world? Dispatches has spent seven months with some of Britain's most challenging primary school children and found in an exclusive poll that 97% of the teachers we surveyed say they have disruptive pupils in their class. Here in Glasgow, in response to this problem, the authorities have been fully funding a unique experiment in 58 primaries. At a cost of £60,000 per school, an entire classroom is devoted to a nurture group, a room for eight to ten children that is designed as a bridge between home and school, with a kitchen, dining table and living space, as well as a teaching area. Right, you pass your plate up for us, please. Children who are disrupting classes come to the nurture group for part of every day. Their teacher can then get on with teaching, but the children also get the attention they need to overcome the immediate problems they're struggling with. But see when I go off in a temper really bad, well, I can't really stop it. I help you out with your anger and feelings and behaviour. They tell you to go to the camp places, like, Take deep breaths and go and sit on the couch and count to ten and then when you're ready, go up and say that on camera and all that. That's the way I do it with my fingers and everybody else just doesn't know how to do it with my fingers. Much better with my fingers. <laughs> On the east side of Glasgow is Wellshot Primary, a school of 350 pupils. It's nine-year-old Jason's first day here. For the last year, he's been taught in isolation and not allowed into the playground with other children because of his aggressive behaviour. At Wellshot, he's gone straight into the nurture group. Jason's just joined us from another school. This is his first day today. Uh, he was very anxious, very apprehensive about coming. He definitely was on edge most of the day. From the previous school, we do know that they found that they could not educate him in a, a mainstream class. He couldn't be with other children. He had to be educated on his own in a separate area. He didn't go out to play uh, or mix with the other children at playtimes and lunchtimes because of his aggressive behaviour. The other children were frightened and scared of him. Get me out of here, quick and smart. You've been a bad boy. No, I'm not. I get me out of here. Yeah. He 
has not been used to interacting with other children. So we thought the nurture class would be an environment for him where he gets a chance to interact in a more positive way. Jason demonstrated this morning already some concerns in his behaviour. The locking up of the house corner, making the place secure, shows a sense that he is insecure in himself and very anxious. Um, also, while we were doing a listening activity, he was making the tiger bite and hit the person next to him, therefore acting out some aggressive behaviour. All in all, he was containable and fine for a first morning, but I, I foresee quite a few problems ahead. It's two months since Jordan started coming to the nurture group in her school in Glasgow. Her behaviour is slowly improving, but her nurture group teacher feels that she needs to involve Jordan's classmates as well to try to reduce her aggression. Jordan was not getting on well with the other children in the class, most especially the girls. The girls were quite intimidated by her. So were the boys, but mostly the girls. You take your units for a walk and I'll walk, She was completely unpredictable and the children were afraid of how she was going to react if they happened to bump into her or if they said the wrong thing and we thought she doesn't have any friends. I decided to put the girls together so that hopefully the girls in the class would begin to see the Jordan that we know, who's very kind and likes people, but for some reason doesn't like to show that side of herself. A key part of the nurture group approach is to positively reinforce good behaviour. I'm going to embarrass Jordan now, I think, because the Jordan we have in here works really hard at her manners. Being kind, like I told you last week, she is fantastic with the younger children. She's very patient, she's very helpful, and she's earned those 20 stickers. She didn't get them for nothing. She's embarrassed. Now, it's not often you see that, is it? How many of you get embarrassed? Mm -hmm. So, Jordan's just the same as the rest of you. She gets embarrassed by the same things. So she's not so different from you. At Ramridge School in Luton, head teacher Hilary Goddard thought carefully about creating a nurture group. Okay, new line, Misha, thank you. Nurture groups are designed to focus on a small group of children but with over 120 children identified in Ramridge as having special social and emotional needs, a different approach was required. Good afternoon, everyone. Instead, Hilary created the Pastoral Care Team, whose job is to work with challenging children throughout the school. This week, we're thinking about celebrating what we can do. What about Burrell? It's six weeks since the day Levi repeatedly refused to go into class, but family worker Kate is still having to persuade him to take part in school activities. Today, he doesn't want to go into assembly. So who are you going down with into assembly? To take these? Well, ta explain it to me again then. What am I not understanding? Explain it to me again so I do understand. Believe I don't get, don't get stroppy and silly. Right, well, because I don't like where this attitude's going, I'm going to leave you alone for a minute. But in, in one minute, Levi, you need to be back up in this room choosing what you're going to do. The time to, for us to go down to assembly. If I hadn't have been there today, he would have gone home. If the children kind of have moments where they need, they need take-up time, if you like, um, it's me or Hilary, and that's pretty much much it. I mean the other BSAs can do it for as much as they can but they have to be in class. Ramridge has a behavioural support assistant or BSA in every class 
Many schools have BSAs. What's special here is the way each one has specific responsibility for six key children who have been identified as needing particular help. They sit down with these kids every week and set behaviour targets. Can you remind me what your target is? Don't react when the teacher tells you something. Don't react how shouldn't you react? Don't react. Go on, you're halfway there. Don't react. Once targets are agreed, progress is then carefully monitored, with every incident reported in writing. Okay, we go. If I have to go, you know what that will mean, don't you? You know what that will mean. It will be a trip to Scudder's office and it will be a phone call home. Stop. Take the pen. Right, Nathan, I'm just going to get your sheet, OK, so I can record it. Once we've identified how a child is disrupting their own learning and the learning of others, then that enables us to set very focused targets for that child. I have this chart. One means poor behaviour, two means set of factual, and three means good, and four means excellent. Levi, too, has to agree new targets with his behavioural support assistant every week. I'd like you to try just one afternoon in, in class. OK, you happy with that? Miss Moran, I give you a new target and then when you've, if, you get, if you've achieved that one then you get a new target, but if you ain't and you're still on that target. I've got to stay in class for one whole day in one whole week. I know, you did really good, you did really well. Sometimes it's really hard, but I just, we just can't do it. When Levi feels he can't cope, he walks out of the classroom. His new target is to stay in class for a whole day at least once a week. Le Levi, are you asking for five minutes time out? I just can't stay in class, because I'll end up doing the same if I stay in. But if I go out of the class, then I'm all right then, because I know I ain't going to do nothing. And he's, he's really right now to on the other book for a while. Another of Ramridge's more challenging pupils is nine-year-old Casey. He was particularly disruptive when he first arrived at the school. Today, he's heading for the BIP room and is struggling to keep up with his most recent behaviour target. My target used to be staying in class, but then it changed to not letting people wind me up and now it's like to not hit people like that, something like that. Casey, okay, so let us shut the door, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Okay. What happened? What's been said that's made you happy? Is something to do with Emery? When you're angry, um, it's like you don't care if any of the teachers are holding you. You want to get off and go and do what you was doing. I'm going across, but you're staying. Make sure you stay here. I asked you if you were ready to go into class, but you're not showing me you're ready. I'm waiting until I am. All right. Well, you tell me when you're ready. Then you tell me when you're calm enough to go into class and to be reasonable. Miss Goddard talks to me, then calms me down. They just say, oh, you can do this or this, then we choose one. Because you could have a bit of time up in the family room. Then there's pine on to that will help. Cool. Pardon? Cool. Okay, let's go to the family room. How was playtime? 
Did he? Mm -hmm. What were you doing when Emery tripped you up? When you came? Beating him up. You were beating him up? Oh, okay. And how did we get to fight with Emery? He tripped me up. He tripped he you up for laughing. Us. Okay. Did that upset you more than him tripping you up? Yeah. yeah. If he didn't want to start laughing, I wouldn't have tripped him and went for him. Okay. I get really, really angry, and when I calm down, I do say sorry and all that. Hillary has brought Casey and Emre together to try to settle their differences. If you tell me your story on this morning, and then Emre tells me his story, we listen to each other, and then we see what, what's in the middle. After you were hurt, you lost your temper, didn't you? What happened when Casey lost his temper? He pushed me and I pushed him back. Right, he pushed you, you pushed him back. Although he still has problems, Casey's behaviour has been transformed over the last three years at Ramridge. His mother, Trina, especially has seen a huge difference. Well, Casey couldn't even sit in a classroom. He was swearing at the teachers, kicking, punching, um, just running right around the school. I used to get called out nearly every single day. So, February, well done. Salary, library. I think I affected the children. Like, I used to shout and scream at the children, and then the children shout back to me, and then I used to be like, well, you shouldn't be shouting at me because I'm your mum. The children weren't obviously getting the good attention off of me. They were just getting snappy, ratty old mum, as opposed to normal mummy. I never used to be a good parent, but I am now. The change in Trina's approach to parenting is largely down to another key aspect of the work of the pastoral care team at Ramridge. As well as working with the children, family workers Runa and Kate also work with parents, both in school and in the children's homes. This has had a huge impact on behaviour. Trina's insights into how her parenting style was affecting all her children came after talking her problems through with Runa. We were having huge difficulty with the boys at school with their behaviour and managing their behaviour. She was having some significant problems at home. At the time, there were many agencies involved with Trina. If she wasn't here or she didn't get me the help that I needed, then I think then I'd be probably wouldn't even have any of my children with me. I have put in place for Trina counselling as well as parenting support. For the children, there's been support at school through mentors, through real consistent boundaries. And showing Trina how that works at school has helped her to put those things in place at home. I think I'm getting to know a little bit more about how things work. Okay. So it's a lot easier for me and it doesn't, like, I used to, you know, like when you sweep something up and it always been a big pile, now it's not, it's all neat. And then if it gets messy, I'll come and get help. But that, it's nice to know that you do feel that you're understood. I had children in year two who were kicking off so bad that tables were being turned over, chairs were being kicked off. Now I see those children managing to stay in class every single day. Because the intervention was put in so early with the families and with the children, we've been able to move them on, but also the families on. In the dispatches poll, the majority of teachers we surveyed, 89% nationally, blamed poor parenting skills for bad behaviour. So, not surprisingly, parental outreach was the intervention that teachers surveyed believe will be most effective in tackling behaviour. It's three months since Jordan joined the Nurture Group in Glasgow and her Nurture Group teacher is having one of her regular meetings with Jordan's mum. So she's beginning to be accepted by the children that she's in school with all the time, which is a huge step for her. And we see that Jordan's happier. Nurture groups don't just transform children, they transform families as well. And many parents have found that their children being in the nurture groups has turned the whole family around and they've got their children back again. It empowers parents and gives them models of ways that they can work with their children so I don't know, have you found the same kind of differences as we have, that she's getting on with people better? Uh -huh, definitely, uh-huh. Oh, come Calm me down. Oh, I'm so glad, that's <laughs> great. Well, you've made my day. <laughs> In the 
east of Glasgow, Jason's been at Wellshot for just a month and is already trying to spend a little time every day in mainstream class, but is proving challenging, not only for Jason, but also for his form teacher and classmates. I'm not bad. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Well, you should be telling me the answers. Although Jason's making progress, his time in the nurture group is still vital, not only for him, but for the whole class. When these children are taken away from the mainstream class, the mainstream class can function properly and the, without interruptions, without the time being spent on these particular children. So it's a win-win situation. Teachers now wonder how they managed without a nurture class. Jason's mum, Sandra, has also seen the benefits of the nurture room. We're going to try and have him fully reintegrated into his class by the end of June. Oh, so we'll try I'll work closely with the class teacher mm -hmm. um, so that it, we have a consistent approach. So we're both yes. doing the same uh -huh, things with uh -huh. him. They said he was an angry boy for what reason, I don't know, you know what I mean? It's just for me, it needs a wee bit of help because of my life, you know what I mean? I need to get my life sorted out. He's been through a lot in his life, right? I was an alcoholic at one time, but I did my time in rehab. And I used to blame the teachers. I think this is quite a good room to calm Jason down. Sometimes when they're playing, the, the play is not what we would call nice play. Make it dead and Ray Mysterio kill them. You have to just stand back and let them act out how they're feeling. Make sure you step in when it's safe, interact positively with them, but not judge them or not say don't do that when they're burying dead bodies in the sand or they're putting the stuffed toys in the oven. Just to stand back and let them get all that out because who's to say what they've seen or heard when they've, before they've even come to school that morning. But children like Jason are the exceptions. Even though a nurture group can cost as little as £40,000 a year to run, only a tiny minority of schools in the UK currently offer this kind of support. And even those schools that do have a nurture group are in many cases facing funding crises as local authorities look for savings. I can't honestly say that next year this nurture room will be open because we haven't got that funding. In an exclusive dispatches poll, 85% of primary school teachers we surveyed say they regularly face deliberately defined behaviour. Yet there are proven strategies to address these problems but very few schools are putting them into practice. In Glasgow, Jason has now been at Wellshot for four months and is responding well to the nurture group approach. He's made great progress. He's now back in class for most of the morning, spending just half an hour down here in the Rainbow Room to have his breakfast and to let out any frustrations that he has um, in a safe way. He has his moments, still has his moments, but they're much fewer, much shorter and much more controlled. But nurture groups don't just lead to improved behaviour. Glasgow City Council spends three and a half million pounds a year on nurture groups and has been carefully monitoring the progress of children they are trying to help. Their research confirmed that the behaviour of children in nurture groups did significantly improve but it also indicated that the council's investment is paying off in other unexpected ways. The research showed that to our surprise that the children in the nurture groups overtook the children in the control groups and actually were doing better at the end of the year in terms of literacy and numeracy. Which one are you on, Dee? Good. Okay, you can do this one and then you can take it down and show Mrs Gilbert. So, as well as taking the source of disruption away from mainstream classes, nurture groups also return challenging children more ready and willing to learn. 
Fly spiders, isn't it? When you're having fun. Having fun doing what? Thank you. Right on the line. And oh one. my goodness, look at that. that top bit, that no, the bottom bit. Oh, it's really, really tidy too. I'm really, really proud of you. Yes, I think you've done it. very, very no, well. No, 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 put your okay, good girl, well done. Off you go. The council's research findings have fully vindicated its decision to invest early in these challenging children and avoid much greater potential costs later in their lives. <laughs> That's it, excellent. Now look at that big pile. You go over that. That's a big pile that you got, right? We've only got a couple more, okay? I think for um, Jason's self-esteem to be part of the class, to socialise with the children, to to be accepted is, is a great thing for him. And he's maybe not had that much in his life up till now. Today was a big, big deal because you were going swimming for the first time and I got a report that you were absolutely fabulous at swimming. Well, we've got a certificate for you to say that you were excellent at swimming today. I'm really proud of you. Give me five. Well done. Well done, son. Well done, Jason. Since he's came here, I do really do see a big difference. It's down to Jason and it's down to me and all to make sure that he does behave. The dispatcher's poll showed that over 56% of teachers we surveyed say that dealing with bad behaviour frequently gets in the way of teaching and learning. But despite the overwhelming evidence that nurture groups are highly effective and can give teachers more time to teach, the continued existence of even the most successful isn't guaranteed. Inns Primary School in Wigan has won an award for its nurture group. One child who's benefited is Tyrone. Absolutely terrific, I felt. Absolutely brilliant. Put a ten-year-old Tyrone used to be at high risk of exclusion, but with the help of the nurture group, not only has his behaviour improved, his reading is now two years above average. Treasure Island is the story of a young boy's adventures, how he set off as a cabin boy. Mum Amanda is a strong advocate of the nurture group. I'm an army wife, I've been for the last 15 years, and Tyrone, all I ever known is army life, so he's swapped and changed schools a lot. Beforehand, it used to be fights upon fights, couldn't talk to him. We're just not fighting now. It's nice not to have the fights. But Tyrone could be one of the last children to benefit from the nurture group here. The room was set up with a £45,000 grant from central government. But while the council in Wigan strongly advocates nurture groups, unlike Glasgow, it doesn't cover the costs of running them. So ongoing expenses now have to be found from savings elsewhere in the school budget. With a large deficit this year, head teacher Gillian Hyde can't guarantee the nurture room's future. It does cost us £55,000 a year. And we know it is a luxury. It shouldn't be a luxury. Other schools should have exactly the same as us. But we can't, we can't afford to lose it. But I can't honestly say that next year this nurture room will be open because we haven't got that funding. It's happy again. Can you choose me? A picture that makes you happy, something that... Before we opened the nurture room, we had a lot of behaviour problems in the school. There was a lot of emotional, social behaviour problems that just couldn't be dealt with when you were trying to teach a class of 30. If the money stopped, if the room didn't exist anymore, then that support wouldn't be there for those children coming into the school. The problems would compound as they went through the years. By the time they reached Key Stage 2, we reached a point where we've got a behaviour problem that may well be irreversible. And that's you know, a sad loss for the child and a sad loss for the school.
Fully funding early intervention strategies like nurture groups is difficult politically because the full impacts can only be seen in the long term. But a British medical journal study showed that by the time they reach adulthood, children who had conduct disorders cost the state on average £70,000 through criminal justice, social services and education. So an investment of just a few hundred pounds early on can reap huge savings later in a child's life. It costs us in primary education £600 a term per child. If a child who hasn't had that kind of intervention at primary and goes on to secondary, and they're the children who are most likely to have poor attendance, to be in trouble with the police, the cost then to support those children is vast. The stuff that goes on in kids' lives, that does mess them up a bit. And having a room like this, they can bring those problems into the school and talk about them, and the school can support them. Right, Keris is happy when she's walking with her dog. If the government really want to invest in early years, as they said they will do, they must invest in nurture groups because time and time again it's shown it does improve a child's self-esteem, a child's motivation to want to learn. If they're motivated to learn, they will learn. I wish the government, I just don't realise that schools need this kind of support. It's not all about academics. The problem that you have is that there's still a bit of a postcode lottery in terms of the provision that local authorities make available to schools. So it can be patchy across the country. There's not a standard package of measures that a school can access. 97% of the teachers we surveyed say they have disruptive pupils in their class, yet despite the evidence that they improve behaviour and academic performance, less than 4% of schools in the UK have a nurture group. The school year is coming to an end in Luton and it's time for the pastoral care team to assess the progress of Ramridge's most challenging children. But well, I wanted to highlight two children in particular, um, Casey and Levi. Levi, he made two points progress in numeracy, six points progress in writing, and eight points progress in reading. Wow. Casey made six points progress in numeracy, um, six points progress in writing, five points progress in reading. So he has made incredible leaps. Even, I mean, even though he has his wobbles, oh, yeah. behavior, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, six points progress is an average child's mm. two years progress. And from Mrs Goddard, Levi, for proving to himself that not giving up and frequent practice really does work. We see far less of the aggressively defensive behaviour from Levi. And he is in school and he is learning and it is a place he really wants to be. And that's quite an achievement. Levi, Casey, Denise, Fawzia, for working well in numeracy, making a good effort. So just give yourselves a pat on the back for that from me. Thank you. You me! Over the six months of filming, Levi has made the journey from frequent visits to the bit room to finding the confidence to pursue an emerging talent as an artist. We're doing Pandora's box and we all got um, things to um, draw. Now I got jealousy. So I said if we could do something on a piece of paper, um, fabric, I mean. My one's right at the end, the black one. It makes me feel good. I'm proud of myself what I've done. Because if you don't try it and you ain't doing it, then you don't know what you, you can achieve. What happened? KC's journey from regular exclusion to making two years academic progress in just three terms also exemplifies the school's success something recognised by Ofsted in October when it specially commended Ramridge on its pastoral care. In year one and two I used to get excluded a lot because I was being bad and chucking chairs around but I don't do that anymore. Numeracy, that's changed me and my mum's turned me around. Like at home I usually do homework and now she helps me. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Well done. Come on. Come on. 
No one got any. We struggle with the work really, really hard, but I'm turning around now. And in every school, you need some some people who are going to help you out if you have any problems. It's good for um, pupils to like express their feelings with somebody. It's really good that people are here to help us. It's good to talk to people, isn't it? Because um, you have to let your feelings out. The early intervention strategies shown in this film are at the leading edge of behaviour management because they address the root causes of challenging behaviour. But despite clear evidence proving their efficacy and long-term cost effectiveness, few schools can get funding to implement these solutions. Interventions that have a huge effect outside schools as well as within. I don't know if you remember, there was a day Jason had had a certificate. You said something that really hit home to Mrs Pearson and I, and you said, I never get them when I was at school. No, I didn't. I was at a meeting um, very uh -huh. recently discussing Jason, and one of the things that I brought up was how, was, was how supportive you've been oh, since Jason came to Welsh Shaw. Yes, uh -huh. So we reckon that you deserved a certificate from us. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've got you a wee certificate that I hope you'll treasure. I will do. That says, <laughs> present. <laughs> Presented to Sandra Hill for being on time every day. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. So I hope you put that up in your fridge or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was extremely proud when I saw Jason standing on the stage singing with his classmates, interacting positively with them, joining in in all the actions and really loving every second of it and just being a true member of the class. Who'd have thought that would have happened four months ago? Adventure.